as of recent with some of these talking heads and the way they spin stuff. Mm-hmm. Like the the hoaxes really got cranked up, bro. Like, did you see this new one with these uh, Patriot Front? Did you see that? No. Oh my god! All right, this shit looked like a hoax. So it, I don't want to jump around because I know we have no, a list, but uh, that's all right. You could even type in if you're not scared. <laughs> Doug, Doug, go it. You know the CIA got your uh, IP address right now. <laughs> They got um, your IP address right now. Fuck it then. Uh, Patriot Front. Like, even the liberal media didn't really cover it that much. It, it looked like feds, and they had stormtrooper knee pads. They had their faces covered, and they were trying to act like there were some alt-right type people. What? Oh, Did you see the I, the I think I did see the one image with the white knee pads or whatever It looked it like, yeah, white knee pads stormtrooper style. <laughs> um, none of them were, like, overweight. It just looked like feds. Yeah, All of them had their faces covered, and then they got loaded up in the U-Hauls and shit when they were done doing their little fake tiki torch thing. Legit U-Hauls? Come on. Some people had pictures. What was it? Uh, what was the one that all the memes were going on recently? Was that January sixth, where the the guys with the shorts and the, like the long shorts? That was another thing. What it, was that? It was another fake gathering that <laughs> no real. Yeah, they all had sunglasses. No real conservatives went to. You have the one guy looking back like, hey, yeah, keep, yeah, keep yeah. Shut. They had the little Zara. <laughs> little denim shorts and shit. Is this it? Oh. Yeah, look at these goofy shields. And look at this, banner, bro. This looks so fake. As they put it, to reclaim America. White nationalists. Joining group. me now, early start anchor and CNN correspondent Laura Jarrett, and back with the CNN senior political analyst John Avalon. Look, yeah. we can agree that that, that this you know, one is too many, right? To, to see anyone marching uh, a white supremacist to the Lincoln Memorial is, is a sight that none of us ever wants to see. There's something almost too on the nose about Thank having you. a bunch of guys dressed up like they're ready to go to war, dressed Good. up with like battle armor and shields. And this is CNN. Mind, the Civil War never ended, right? right? And what they're chanting is always so telling. Reclaim America. When was America ever taken? And when, who was it taken from and by whom? Well, they feel like it's been taken but, from white folks. But since when are brown and black what? people ahead, right? So it's since when are, when, since when are white men still on top? We're applying logic to their anxiety. My, yeah. my point is to say there is just, there's something so remarkable about having uh, self-avowed white nationalists, white supremacists, war- w- walking, marching on um, a memorial for somebody who signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Yeah. Yeah. It, sh- it just sort of exemplifies the country's ongoing struggle with racism. What? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, I, I thought when she that. said on the nose, I thought she meant it's obviously fake. No, I, I feel like the, the guy next to her was just like, mm-mm, mm-mm, don't say that. Don't say it's too on the nose. Like, we're trying to keep this narrative mm-hmm. going there. Bro, um, did you hear the part where Rogan was uh, uh, giving advice to CNN saying, like, I, f- I, I can't remember if it was the one with the, uh, I forget the guy's name, the more more dates, more plates. Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. I think it was that episode. I'm like I, halfway through. I haven't heard that part yet. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah. I was at HEB uh, checking it out. And um, I believe Rogan was saying, like, hey, CNN, like, I want like there there's a demand for a product of like facts and news and a lot less opinion spin talking heads always trying to f- cram a narrative and um and I guess some people speculate like okay I think the uh, one of the owners of CNN was quoted saying like yeah we need to get back to real j- journalism and then they got rid of Cuomo we don't know what's gonna happen with that but and we'll talk about that in a minute. But they got Cuomo out the way. They're like the lineup. It's almost like an opportunity to rebrand or at least make it less fake. Mm-hmm. Because right now there's a dude named uh, Smirkanish that's filling in as a guest host for Chris Cuomo. It's almost like he's auditioning. Yeah, well, they all are. Who do you think is going to take that slot? Well, here's the thing. It depends on if they're going to try to still stay on the Don Lemon type of uh, angle. Brian Seltzer type of angle or try to get like this guy Smirconish according to Scott Adams he always gives him props saying like he's a little bit more towards the middle mm. like you know on some Bill Maher type shit well you know Jeff Zucker's on his way out right and there's gonna be new oh, complete shit. new ownership or new uh, management of the station or of the network yeah. so 
you know, oh, I did not know that. Yeah. So Jeff Zucker's on his way out and he was really cool with uh, Cuomo like for years. Like they've been very buddy buddy. And uh, there was some I'll kind of read some of it. But there was like reports of him having known about some of the nefarious shit that he would do over the years. And uh, he would just kind of let it slide. Right. Because they were bros. They were dudes. Which, all right. Whatever. It's your friend. Whatever. Do, do what you got to do. But now there's new management. Now there's new people taking over. And it, it does seem like some people are reporting that they want to, you know, take the scene, take CNN in a new direction. Right. I don't know if it has anything to do with uh cnn what is it cnn plus coming out next year like the new streaming service i don't know i haven't really heard much about that i mean definitely from a branding perspective i think rogan is right saying like man if y'all could just stop dividing the country and stop making everything about race stop being so damn marxist and stop pushing these hoaxes where y'all getting sued every other damn month um i mean just for the sake of You know, I don't want to get conspiratorial. Let's but it, but do it. it. But, 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 you know, we've talked a lot on this show about the amount of influence that China has when mm. it comes to well, the CCP, when it comes to like flying out up and coming journalists and, you know, getting a little honeypot schemes with the, the local city council dude that might be a congressman one day and just having your little spies and shit like that. Like, you know, a lot of influence with scientists and big institutions and things like that. It, it's almost like, okay, I get it. It's a business. It's owned by AT&T. Jeff Zucker was like at the helm of it. And then you do your casting, you know, people like Chris Cuomo and someone who could read a script and, you know, it's a production, right? Mm-hmm. You're shaping a thing and you're trying to make a product. But we've seen how dangerous, like how divisive, how incendiary, like y'all literally standing in front of a burning city saying, oh, well, it's mostly peaceful. And like y'all choose not to call out Antifa, but y'all put so much emphasis on fake shit and how much um, like the, J- the J6 thing, like it's, it's the worst thing. Uh, we have a, a special um, g- guy on here via Zoom. It's like, man, it's the worst thing since, since this worse than 9-11. It's like, let's get somebody else on. Man, it's worse since the Civil War. And then they get like a, a Latina of color. She's like, this is just proof that the white man. And it's like CNN. Whoa. <laughs> hey, chill out with the blue and on. It's like, who are you trying to pander to? Like how many, if we were to believe what people say, some reporters say about the ratings being so just abysmal and in the gutter, who are you still trying to pander to when we watch a video like the one we just saw of it's like all these white nationalists and this, that, and the other and white supremacists and every day America's fighting with this. No, man. No, they're not. Yeah, she that lady was on some victim shit. Yeah. Like, since when have people of color had anything over white people? And it's like, well, in Texas, white people can't get the monoclonal antibodies because <laughs> they ain't black or brown, and they're not an at risk community. Yeah, and and white kids got to lie on college applications just to get a fair shake. It's ridiculous, man. It's funny because. It's interesting to see over the last year, and it could kind of to go back to you watching earlier early episodes of the podcast, and what you know what you were saying and what you thought about it. Let me ask you again: What did you think about episode six and episode thirty something uh-huh. about what you were saying? Okay, um, well, I think that um, we forget sometimes. Not that we're ahead of the curve, but in a way, in a lot of ways, we are simply because. A big portion of the... Of in regards the, to the normies. Yes. A yeah. big portion of the population are normies. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just like, hey, we got an, a family event to get to. We got to stop, pick up the pan dulce. Like, we have to text mom, and we got to get the kids out the thing, and we got to turn in that paper and reply to this. And you don't have time to be like, what did DeSantis do? And what's what's the future of Arizona? And, and what's going to happen with t- midterms? And who's running for my school board? You know, because I heard the Carrie Lake thing. Ah, yes. Um, like a lot of normies, like the stuff that we might talk about, for example, um, there was a, a member of the school board in Arizona. Not just a I, member, but like president or chairman of the school board. Yeah, 27, unmarried, no kids. Liz was parents. President of the school board, uh-huh. something like that, really high up position. Well, he was keeping a file, a dossier, if you will, of the parents. Any parent that went up and said something about critical race theory, asked questions about the curriculum, boom, we got a file on. What, what, let me pull up your divorce decree, what all yep. was in there, what led to that, the pictures of the kids, yep. addresses, like digging up dirt. Like, what you finna do with it? What, what, what's, what are you going to do with all that? Shit that no regular American who's trying to get back on their feet if they're not already half-assed kind of there, like they were in 2019, is paying attention to. 
But when you listen to a show like this, or you listen to a show that might be an actual like news delivery show, which by the way, talking about charts, we are now in the 150th. We went from like 220 something. We're like 150th range of top news commentary podcast in all of the United States. You know, no big deal. She, you only, know what I'm saying? only thousands of these out there. Wow. Well, you know what? Congratulations to the audience, the <laughs> members of the TIA, the Tamal Intelligence Agency, uh, all the patrons, everybody that's been down, yeah. everybody that's in the Discord, everybody that tags us on memes, everybody that sends us links and news stories, um, people that tell a friend, people that come to the shows and say, hey, man, where's Rob? Yeah. We're listeners, you know? I'm at home, but um, hope you had a good time at the show. Hey, man, I'm trying to be home, too. <laughs> um, but, yo... The, that's a testament that like, hey, I, I firmly believe that it's all going to just snowball. Absolutely. Um, and, and given this isn't our only show, you know, we do a non-political show and we plan on doing all kinds of other stuff. Uh, I, I enjoy podcasting. I put it on my vision board this morning. Yeah. So that's definitely on the vision board. That's a topic um, for Chingo Chats after we do this. I want to talk about that. Talk about what's on the vision board. Yeah. For sure. Um, but yes, I, I just... I just, um, I would just encourage that, um, I hope, I hope that more people just get a little bit more, um, you know, you don't want to get, you don't want to get obsessed with politics or nothing like that, but I think it's a healthy conversation to say, what are they teaching the kids in the schools? Yeah. And what are they doing with our tax dollars? And hey, does all this crime have to happen? Is it just root causes people are oppressed that's why you gotta bust up in the neiman marcus that's why you're at the galleria smashing the jewelry thing (laughs) because the white man you see what i'm saying like for example brother i just had to go do um a a viewing to a family member right I mean, all the details are now. It appears to be some type of road rage type of thing. And I, and I think to myself, I think to myself, like, okay, who was this person? Are they just career criminals? Um, were they out on bail? You know, and that's, and it comes, it leads back to local politics. Like, well, hey, who is this DA? For example, the county, what, what is she, Lena Hidalgo, county yeah, judge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of some sort, county judge. She announced, I'm going to be running for my reelection. And it's like, uh, I'm going to put that on my calendar because uh-huh. we are not a fan of how y'all approach things. Speaking of local crime and locals and all that jazz, <laughs> let me play a video for you. See if you can get your take on it. Too much crime. <laughs> Fuck. Where is it? Man, I got that one ugly toenail, and uh, I got to be on that mat tonight, so I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to um, put some tape on that motherfucker. <laughs> I'm, th- I'm thinking about uh, You're ahead jiu-jitsu of class already. tonight. Dude, check this out. And a former convict says he felt safer during his life of crime after his Oakland cannabis dispensary was ransacked last month. Listen to this. I was safer selling weed on the streets of Oakland than I am selling it legally. And that's a problem. That's crazy to even say, but that's just the reality I'm living in right now. His name is Alfonso Blunt. <laughs> and that's a problem. <laughs> dude, he sounds like he'd be bank. a funny dude if you try to stand up. Look, bring it back. Uh, halfway. Okay. I want to hear his, his. And that's a problem. This month, listen to this. I was safer selling weed on the streets of Oakland than I am selling it legally. And that's a problem. Pause. That's crazy <laughs> Who does that Somebody, sound like? That's a problem. He's from the yank. Who does that? He's a lawyer to the soil. <laughs> and that's a problem. Somebody needs to sample that, make a beat. Dude, that sounds like some, it's on the tip of my tongue, dude. That sounds like uh, somebody. 40, who, uh, it sounds like sure. somebody who's already very famous. And that's a problem. Um, the, the running back. What? what? Uh, they, they ate the Skittles. Oh, Marshawn Lynch? Yeah. It does. It kind of from the Bay, too. You're right. I'm telling you, that's out there in Oakland. So about 15 people ran into this man's legal marijuana dispensary. How many times have have people brought up, like, there aren't enough minority-owned dispensaries when, when marijuana goes legal? You know, some people just don't have a chance or for whatever reason is it a funding thing or the way the licenses are issued but here we have a a black man that owns a legal marijuana dispensary and he's literally on fox news saying i was better off slanging fucking weed on the on the block let's hear from the man one more time i was safer selling weed on the streets of oakland than i am selling it legally and that's a problem and that's a problem that's y'all got me all the way fucked up straight the fuck up 
<laughs> he, he, he went straight busy bone <laughs> when they did the verses. <laughs> hey, y'all ain't finna be mocking me while I'm up here singing straight the fuck up. It was like straight the fuck up, <laughs> that's and that's a problem. This <laughs> Marshawn Lynch mixed with like uh, Busy Bone. <laughs> no, who's Chappelle's character? Oh. Uh, Clayton Bixby. Oh, that's fucked up, that's, and that's a problem. That's what you sounded like right now, and that's a problem. Alfonso Blunt, uh, <laughs> dude, that man, you got 15 people running up in your shit. <sighs> 15 people. Dude, have you Bum seen rush. that account, like Street People of LA or Street, yes. Street, Street People of Los Angeles? Street People of Los Angeles. That is a terrifying Instagram account. And that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, well, that's going to be a drop on the board. And that's a problem. I'm like, Joe Biden wants to do a, uh, another $3.5 trillion, And that's a problem. That is absolutely going to be a drop on the butt. Yes. <sighs> wow. We will pray for the Bay Area. As we've already seen, bro, Walgreens have had to shut down. You got Mayor London Breed. They clapped back at AOC. Did you see that? Or, uh, Monday? Walgreens was like, bitch, yeah. we've been having to spend 46 times the average Security. anywhere else in the country yeah. here in the Bay. Well, there. Well, the yeah, there. That's, they said it from there. No. Well, hopefully we don't get to that point. <clears throat> wow, son. Um, so, crime in New York. New NYC continues to implode. De Blasio... He he he's um uh, putting trying to put fear in the hearts of the New Yorkers. Yeah, man, this shit. With shit's, Omicron, this shit is fucking outrageous. We've got Omicron as a new factor. We've got the colder weather, which is going to really create additional challenges with the Delta variant. We've got holiday gatherings. We in New York City have decided to use a preemptive strike to really do something bold to stop the further growth of COVID and the dangers it's causing to all of us. So. As of today, we're going to announce a first-in-the-nation measure. Our health commissioner will announce a vaccine mandate for private sector employers across the board. All private sector employers in <laughs> New York City will New be covered York. by this vaccine mandate as of December 27th. We're going to have some other measures as well to really focus on maximizing vaccination quickly so we can get ahead of Omicron and all mm. the other challenges we're facing right now. Uh, okay. Well, Let's really dissect this a little bit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and 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 if you don't mind, you want to read Wesley's uh, Wesley Hunt. Uh, yeah, vaccine mandates, vaccine passports, and government methods of tracking Americans who have or have not participated in the dire threat to liberty. Uh, De Blasio's actions are prime example of what unchecked uh, leftists will do with the power. We cannot allow dangerous bureaucrats to destroy our constitutional. Uh, all in the name of public health. Constitution, all in the name of public health. Huh. So Wesley Hunt is running. Who, he Congress. should win this easily this year, this time around. Well, hopefully, man, you know, elections are, are nice and clean and transparent. And yeah. We need to get rid of them damn machines, pimping. Stick to the ballots. It's a problem. That's a problem. Um, okay. So de Blasio, th we just finished saying, we just finished saying, like, we know politics is it could be boring to some people or it just gets a little overwhelming and confusing and stressful but de blasio is an example of like who you vote in will put will definitely put a damper <laughs> yeah. on oh shit now you got to jab up look at this vaccine proof for indoor dining fitness and entertainment required for children ages 5 to 11 how many people are, are not going to be able to do stuff Y'all need to escape New York, bro. Yeah. I, you know, I'm almost at a loss for words because when this all first started, uh, when was, I think it was December, not December. It was this year sometime when, when uh, Biden, event, like, changed his mind and said, we're going to go ahead and make everybody do this thing. Whenever he first said that he was going to. The not, federal government. Cannot, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, a part of his, like, six pillar build back better bullshit was that uh, companies with 100 employees or more, a couple months ago, are going to have to mandate this thing. And that's when the whole conversation of this is constitutional started coming up. And I remember saying on the podcast, I was like, this could be just a part of the plan of we're going to jam it up in the courts and say that it's. A mandate right so that people do it because they're scared of losing their job but they're mm -hmm. scared of possible repercussions just to see if we can get the percentage of people vaxxed in the country higher and then when it came down to it the courts would just be like you can't do this old man but at that point how many people went ahead and did it anyway right so th this clip i know right so this clip is from msnbc i wonder how they feel about this shit um i mean y this is where my thought process goes all right New York City, that's millions of people, pretty diverse. 
for one, you got like, you've seen like Hasidic Orthodox Jews. Sometimes they're like very off the grid Amish mm. type of type of lifestyle, like very, very old school where they're not going to put this shit in their body. It's almost like, what are y'all trying to turn New York into? It's almost like, hey, they're trying to run out all the Orthodox Jews who probably own a big portion of Brooklyn. Well, you know what I was reading that de Blasio has said out loud before is that one of his goals is to, or one of the things that he will eventually do is buy a lot of this commercial real estate for pennies on the dollar and then turning it into public housing. Oh my goodness. Okay. Doesn't it all make sense when you, when you know that? Oh, so then he would own the shit? I mean, the government would own it. Mm. I mean, it's almost like, what is New York going to morph into if they have an exodus like just let's just say families that can afford to just all right we're going to jersey or we're going to philly or we're going somewhere I'm connecticut jersey. or oh i don't know what options these people have right because you're getting surrounded <clears throat> but it's almost like what will new york become what is it going to morph into if people got to bounce well in new york city alone you want to take a guess and this is just obviously the last number i saw how many what percentage of people this affects like what percentage of people won't be able to go to outdoor indoor places and fitness entertainment like what percent of people want to take a guess i mean if you're saying how many people have five-year-olds and up and, and or, how many people are vax hesitant right facts yeah i mean consider how consider how big the black population is in new york latino population man i'd say at least half the freaking city can't do 40 it's about 40 percent right now is what i've seen that is gonna people are basically they're, they're gonna have uh, like outcast yeah, yeah. outcast what, what's another word for it like, like second class citizens. yeah they're gonna be segregated they're gonna be you know just denied access to these places they're gonna be at the unvax water fountain <laughs> dude yeah it sounds stupid but that's got probably coming have you been to a store I'm sure you have, where you see the water fountains are, they got signs like, you can't drink from them. You haven't seen those? And what does it say? If you're unvaxxed? Well, uh, no, it just says... Uh, Vaxxed only? No. <laughs> uh, grant, not yet, but granted, they're just like closed uh, all together. Like, for your safety, these are Oh, turned, yeah, these are they off. just turned off. Yeah. I know, like, 24-hour fitness for a while. Well, those are going to turn into those vaxxed here, not vaxxed over there kind of thing. I, I guarantee you. <sighs> Of course, I'm being a little hyperbolic, everybody. Bro, but you, no, never, but, you never know. Yeah, but yes, sure, we're being a little bit hyperbolic. But still, like, people who identify <clears throat> as, like, leftists or Democrats or progressive or... Because that seems to be a big factor, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's like, when they hear stuff like this... Do they not get a little uneasy or do they question it at all? Because what I picture is World Economic Forum, Build Back Better, this weird dystopian, highly surveilled CCP version of New York, Vax Pass New York, public housing New York, where like, oh, all these, um, these used to be office buildings and record labels and all types <laughs> of shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, accounting firms, just all types of office space is now going to just be build back better pods, eat your cricket pace and stay in your metaverse. Yeah, basically. That's how I picture it. Like, whoa, y'all really did use this little bug to shake up the world, shake the box up and implement all these changes y'all wanted to. That was another video that Trevor Noah had um, where he was saying, you know, these crazy conservatives already have their conspiracies about, um, what is it, Omicron? Omicron? What would they say about the Omicron? That, you know, oh, he was making a joke that, I think it was a Fox and Friends panel was saying that, like, you know, Democrats are really, basically what we just said, where they're taking this bug and they're using it to the fullest, uh, you Power know, control. With mail-in ballots yeah, and, you pass, know, scaring people. Passports, all surveilling this, you. Right. But he's making a joke of it as like, well, that means the Democrats would have to, and this is what a lot of people who want to be a little bit more centrist, which I understand, are like, well, they would have to conspire with this group, you know, the CDC and that group over there, blah, <laughs> yeah. blah, blah. I'm like, yeah. I mean, pretty much. Like, we can't say it's 100%, but for you to want to deny it 100% is really, really silly. Well, well here's the thing. Is it conspiring or is it systems that have it to where they go unchecked? Meaning, what are the incentives? Okay, if you're a politician that wants to get reelected, you might want to refer to the CDC, which they might have been compromised. But as a, you're a business owner. Let's just say you're the owner of Bed Bath & Beyond yeah. or something, right? And you're trying to implement policy for your stores in all, let's just say you got at least one in all 50 states. 
which the rules vary. But now you're having to say, well, what are we going to do? We don't want to come across as crazy conservatives. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll just refer to the CDC. You know what I mean? It's almost like by definition, that's kind of conspiratorial, isn't it? Like if if something goes unchecked or unbalanced, you literally conspire to make sure that didn't get fulfilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I guess I guess what I was trying to say is like when some people shy away from the whoa, 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 like Trevor saying, oh, that's like saying they all got together and had a meeting, and yeah. it's like no, they don't necessarily have to have a meeting. They they just do like Mockingbird, where it's like well, science shows, data shows, yeah, and then. We're living in the environment, bro. This Uber driver told me this shit the other day, bro. Bro, we need chronicles of the Uber drivers. <laughs> this story. motherfucker, bro. This motherfucker's trying to red pill me, and I'm like, I'm already red pill. Check out my podcast. Let's chop it exactly. So I got to start having stickers on me at all times, business cards and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I, for real, I was straight up like, write it down, pimping. Don't forget, red pill tamales. So he was saying this. He was like. Dude, back in the day, they they they'd call you a heretic. Like if you went, it it had to be Catholicism or whatever. He was trying to say like, when there was like the kingdom and this one religion, and they and you, they were forcing you, and you didn't have, you know, freedom of religion or, or whatever. And if you questioned anything, or you went against the high priests, you know, uh, the Vatican, you went against the Pope, you go against these institutions, you'll get labeled and you'll get ostracized. And, and you know, back in the day, they burn you at the stake type of thing. They'll, right. call, they'll call you a witch. I mean, we've seen all types of stuff like that. He's like, now they doing that with like, you unvax, you vax this. And the media echoes it and all that. Um but we're definitely seeing, for example, check this out, where you have science. Science is a, is a system, and it's a, a way of coming up with hypotheses and testing your, your control group and how you interpret data, shit like that. That's science, right? Scientism is we have this institution that you dare not question. We have this high priest that if you question him, you're questioning science. It's almost like he's the Pope and he got a direct plug with God and you questioning God when you're questioning the Pope. They're like, it's like, I'm Tony Fauci and that's a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like it's scientism. Now you're going up against institutions. So a scientist can't even tweet certain stuff or say certain things on youtube where they're like well based on this data it's like no 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 you're going against uh peter barrick you know uh, francis collins the nih you're going against fauci you're going against these big bureaucratic institutions and then that bleeds over into well what is the media doing well we're referring to what the cdc said and who they refer to well the world health world health organization said where they get that from our friends at wuhan the scientists at this military lab, basically, mm-hmm. uh, okay, well, where'd they get it from? Well, they're not that transparent. So now you live in some county in Kansas or what have you, and now they, they're doing certain rules at, at a store because Fauci said on CNN, according to the CDC, according to the, the motherfuckers from Wuhan, and it's like, all y'all bitches is wrong. We're no longer thinking logically. We're no longer doing science. Now we're doing the high priest that you dare not question. It's a very good point. That and, is going to be a great and I love And I love that Rogan like stays saying like, what are y'all doing, CNN? Or yeah. like, that's not accurate. Or like, whatever happened to, if, if it worked for me and I told my friend about it and it worked for him and then it worked for him and now he, he, he threw the touchdown and this motherfucker is Dana White. And, and Did you Tim hear the Poole? Dana White uh, interview? No. On Team Z Sports? Mm-mm. I'll, while I pull it up, let me go back kind of to what we were saying about Cuomo and, you know, getting fired and the Zucker stepping down and new management taking over and all that. It's like it's going in a different direction. But how much credibility have they lost? And personally, let me just say this. They've lost so much credibility that I honestly can't see how it regains any of it or a large portion of it to where their ratings aren't in the dumpster. But also, why why would you want to give that same, you know, just because they got new management and they're making a you know, better effort with a couple of their anchors to maybe be a little bit more centrist, why even give them any more of your attention? Independent media is the new mainstream media. Yeah. Because as these older people start not just dying off, but getting older and there's less of them paying attention to these, you know, corporate type of uh, cable news stations, our generations have been living on the internet. We've been going to the independent journalists and the independent news stations, networks, podcasts, YouTube channels forever. 
that's the new mainstream media. Well, you still got soccer moms, like like uh, wives that stay at home, and they just think like CNN's going to tell me about the Ahmaud Arbery. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, did you hear what uh, uh, Anderson Cooper, the new one, where Anderson Cooper told us the news? The facts about how Trump is evil, and they, up until recently, they would be playing CNN at all the um, airport terminals, and that contract ended. Yeah, re- uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying up yeah. until recently. So, you know, and then you turn on Netflix and you see what's the name, the quarterback Colin, talking about white people or the fucking devil. You know what I'm saying? Then you turn on Twitter and Seth, Seth Rogen is uh, defending criminals. And, and you look at TikTok and you got some dude with his nails painted telling you how <laughs> how uh, BLM is actually doing good stuff for black oh, people. Man, dude, you got some little white boy with his nails painted. That's a problem with buku pronouns. That's a problem telling you what the fuck. Uh. You know the, the the leaders of BLM are actually doing for black folk. Oh man. Okay, after this commercial, I'm pulling up. Damn it, YouTube with your fucking commercials. But hey, Patreon.com. I, I, I pop my new tropics. You know what I'm new about? tropics, I got yeah, you. That. How are you feeling, Dana? This is the question on everybody's mind. We were worried about you. I'm How you incredible. Doing? Today is day five. Testing positive for COVID, and today, this morning at nine o'clock, I tested negative. Thank you, Dr. Joe Rogan. <laughs> Wait, do we? Uh, is it time we actually give Joe Rogan his medical license? He he got Aaron Rodgers healthy in like two days. He you know, and, and himself, he did it himself, and like forty other people that he's close to. He's done this with. So, and and here's the reality. In in all seriousness, Joe Rogan is a brilliant guy, and he he talks to the most brilliant people out there. Uh, he, he studies, he does his homework on all this stuff. It's closer and, to science. You know. Yeah. How many anchors and news shows and segments do we hear on TV that have like the best of the best for a long, cause that's that shit, the two, three minute shit, man. You're just not getting all the information you need. Fauci on TV five times a day for 60 seconds at a time isn't doing it. Bro. I, I, I mean, look, on one side, you got Chris Rock, De La Hoya. You know what I'm saying? Need I go on, LeBron. I yeah. mean, <clears throat> Whereas Rogan is actually trying to get up to date, cutting edge, like talking to people who are like, well, the study, you know, the science, the, the data, whatever. I don't want to say the science, but like, because that's <laughs> stupid as fuck. But like, you know, based on when you factor in these variables like uh, obesity and, and how soon some of these treatments, you know, the monoclonal antibodies, why is DeSantis making it readily available? You know what I mean? Why are they having such a good time? It's like you got people like that. Which, sure, I'm biased because they're going to fall more in tune with what the fuck I would like to hear. (laughs) Now, that's a problem. (laughs) That's a problem. However, the minute Kyrie Irving wants to maybe ask some questions or some other athletes or actors or just different people want to parents, even when parents are like, oh, wait a minute, I have have a 13 year old. I've been hearing some things about myocarditis and pericarditis and these other things and and and. We do know that even if you are vaccinated, you can catch it and you can spread it. And what's the efficacy rate? What's the duration? But I have a 13-year-old. And you know what I mean? It's like, and my doctor said, and it's like, no, I'm fucking Tony Fauci. And you got to get the Pfizer. I don't know if this is like a, a real Texan thing, but I always grew up thinking that by definition, being skeptical and being a little, uh, a, like, you know, pushing back on authoritarian type of rhetoric or whatever was was a natural innate part of being an american and now it just seems like we're being convinced that a over 50 percent majority of this country no longer thinks independently no longer wants to push back on authoritarian type of talk or actions they're just like go with it to get along go what is it go along to get along i don't think so yeah no man they they want to demoralize you and and overwhelm you with the the fog of war but i mean common sense people they'll listen to you if you can give them some reasonable information you just can't put a hit piece out on Nicki Minaj just because she heard some anecdotal shit right you know right away they want to frame you and put false narratives on you like Jingle Bling's a sellout you know uh Rogan has Matt Taibbi on today journalist Matt Taibbi oh yeah very famous who he used to be with who now uh he was a French I think he was a French journalist 
He's written a lot of books. I mean, he was with Rolling Stone. He's written a lot of oh, books. Oh, interesting. Um, anyway, yeah, I've, I've he's a super interesting guy. He's regarded as one of like you know the last few real journalists or whatever. So, so w- what we're seeing, bro, is basically like one portion of the country might be privy to to different independent sources mm-hmm. where they are already seeing how the media works. So, if your main outlet is the media pushing this thing on you if anything that's a flaw like hypothetically pretend that medicine really was like oh my god it's like really great like it's working for everyone de la hoya chris rock it's lebron it's working right. for everybody and then you put the messaging in the hands of the distrusted media you could be doing a disservice you know whereas you look at the proof that's in the pudding where you're like okay I know about Substack. I know about different, you know, I'm hearing about VARES. I'm, I heard about how Project Veritas exposed some things, and I know what th- some of these words mean. You know what I mean? Right. Be- instead, they try to play this game where they change definitions and, and move goalposts and stuff like that. Man, I just, t- so I was looking at, you said something that triggered this video that got sent to me, and I typed in exactly what the title of the video is, and it won't pop up on YouTube. Hmm. Interesting. So the video is titled Resist. Might have to do Rumble. Oh. Your life literally depends on it. Well, I don't know if it's on Rumble. Resist. Your life depends on it. Well, yeah. I feel like the future, the freedoms that your kids are going to have. And like, what is New York going to look like due to medical tyranny? You know what I'm saying? Due to like, they don't, they no longer believe in body autonomy. They no longer believe my body, my choice. They no longer believe like, hey, I want to make med- medical decisions on my own you see what i'm saying see what i'm saying cuh no i'm talking about that's a problem that's a problem and that's a problem cuh damn man i I was safer out here on the block selling my illegal marijuana (laughs) Ooh, it's like e40 is that you (laughs) (laughs) i used to make way more way more chicken chicken scratch out here slinging my Uh. illegal marijuana Dude, what the fuck? Where's this We're video? having technical difficulties. No, it's not technical difficulties. It just literally won't come up. Oh, found it. Oh, I was about to say. Dude, buried. Buried, buried, buried. That's what they do. Big tech. Yeah. Big tech. The same people that want to fact check everything and put a damn little disclaimer at the bottom of stuff. I literally had to look it up by the name and still it didn't pop up. But you mentioned, you know, we were talking about. County High School Here, let's just watch is it. in the hospital after collapsing on the tennis courts. Breaking new details on the deaths of a high school soccer player. Finland, Denmark star man Christian Eriksson collapsing towards the end of the first half. The Kennedy High community mourning tonight after one of their high school football players died. A South Carolina I'm surprised they haven't taken this down. Died after collapsing they sure did bury it. Practice. Star college basketball player collapsing on the court. Court, we want to warn you, the video may be difficult Look how hard to watch. he falls on his Florida face. Florida Gators star Keontae Johnson collapsing during the game. Oof. A West Catholic high school student has died Oof. after collapsing during a football scrimmage. On mile eight, she suddenly felt fuzzy and blacked out. 17-year-old Ryan uh, Were they all vaxxed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ex- yeah, yeah. Even at 17? Collapsed yeah. On the field. Megan went into cardiac arrest. Collapsing during Friday night's football game. And then there's, you know, a bunch of the articles from all the major publications about these. Have you seen, have you seen the screenshots or memes or whatever of um, all the headlines that are now coming out where it looks like they're trying to get ahead of this? Like saying, we may start seeing more heart attacks due to marijuana use no. and stress from the pandemic. Like, I didn't see that. No. That, that almost, almost is like the... Uh, well, I guess you would say like the Rosetta Stone. It's almost like the key. It's almost like that missing piece, right? That's going to unlock the whole... Like, you watch this, and you might be thinking, okay, well, are they all vaxxed? And, okay, well, how did... You know, how did the reporting happen for this? But then you see the other thing where it's like, simultaneously, they're trying to tell you that all of a sudden, you about to start seeing a lot of heart attacks due to these random climate change, root causes, racism, you know... You know, and this is a point in the podcast where I have to say, I understand some of this sounds pretty kooky and crazy. You know, if someone's trying to, you know, go through our episodes and parse out little pieces of content to take out of context, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, this sounds completely batshit crazy. But if you do a little extra diving and to go back to the original point of having some independent thought, you know, kind of pushing back, being a little skeptical of things and not just accepting it, you're going to find some shit that kind of makes you go, huh, interesting. Like, huh, it, like, 
if hypo like um if we were seeing that this particular treatment is like super effective like if you just if you just literally saw like nah bro when people get it they feel fine and they never get sick bro they're like super cured right rogan style right <laughs> and then you see this then of course you could be like well this might be propaganda maybe it's the big pharma hating on each other uh maybe this is russian disinformation to hurt americans to scare us and divide us over this simple effective you know dr drew was on uh andrew santino's podcast love cheeto santino love dr drew and it was interesting and it was it was a fun conversation talked about a lot of stuff but dr drew got covid uh i think twice maybe just one time but he had some some real long haulers effect of it and uh, he talked about all the things that you know he took and did to overcome it and um you know, he, he cites Rogan's kitchen sink treatment, which in my head, I'm like, why isn't that already just a staple in early COVID testing? I'm going to ask Dr. Jeremy. I'm going to be like, hey, bro, hypothetically speaking, he's like, well, man, you, you, you caught the Rona? No, no, no. Hypothetically speaking, if I were to call you one day and say, hey, man, I think I'm early symptoms or I, I, I think I just, it's an early phase. Give me the kitchen sink. I need the Regeneron. I need the my, my clonal. That's a problem. <laughs> The microbio, microbiotic. And I say, yeah. no, 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 that's not what it is. My, my, my clono, yeah. Chingo, is what you're saying. Like, could you give me that? Or are you going to give me a hard time? Be like, well, first, you know, we got to test for this. And you just can't take it willy-nilly. Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good point. I should have asked him that last time I was I'm, there. I, hey, I'm going to ask him. Hey, yeah. man, you, you, man, look, I already got the ivermectin. Yeah, no, I'll definitely ask him. When we go, which isn't often, obviously, but Don's like, hey, don't be, uh, don't be super aggressive. I'm like, I'm just asking him a question. Don't be super aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm like, I'm not. I just, I have my questions. Don't you be know? like, okay, so can I still catch it even if I got the jab? Can I still spread it? Rob, Robert. Yeah, no, he'll be super honest. He'll be like, well, yes, yeah, so you can, you know, and he, he won't like, he won't lie to you, but he'll be like, I know what you're, you're trying to build up a case against this, but you know, I'm still going to recommend it. Cause I feel like, and he does, I mean, a lot of doctors feel that it's in your best interest, you know? Yeah. It's all case by case. It's case by case. But, um, man, bro. So this goes on for another yeah. four minutes. So or? if you guys, I'll, I'll try to remember to put it in the show notes. Uh, it's called resist dash your life. Very literally depends on it. And in the channels, uh, what is that? Coach, Coach red pill. Coach red pill. What are the com? Oh, 1800 comments. Uh, this is not normal. Um, the level of evil that exists in this world. Um, my sister told me what my sister told me my mind was warped because I choose to not be vax. I said to her, you were against the vag. Da, 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 da. Huh? Okay. Yeah. So go look it up. See if you can find coach red pill. Um, how big is the channel? How many? I can't see that. Uh, t wow. 276,000 subscribers. subscribers. Of course you can't see the amount of dislikes. Um, so, yeah. So scroll up to see where these get, where they get it. Okay. Well, so the, the other one is MSNBC. This one's BBC News. Uh, let's just watch a couple more seconds of it. HVG, I don't know what that is. A Hungarian website. Oh, probably. Uh, oh, this is from all around the world. It's not even just the U.S. And they're all pretty much athletes. Players, player collapses, game... Yeah. The reason for his collapse is unknown. The reason why Manny collapsed in the first place still isn't known. Still isn't known. Hockey players collapsing, cardiac arrest. Eighty percent of the league is vaccinated. But do they tell you like this person was vaccinated? Yeah, yeah. You can. I mean, if you go and there's somebody in the comments actually. I, I did see that he took the time to screenshot all of the and research and research them all. And he's like, in case this video ever gets taken down as information, like you guys will want to go do the same. So anyway, find it. Wow. Look at it. Share it. Maybe. Maybe don't share it. People already probably think you're crazy if you're going against this. Yeah. Just, you know, for the normies. But I thought I'd pull it up for you. Shout out to my buddy Joey that sent it. Um. Yeah, man. We have Omicron. You know, we have uh, we have this fucking Autobot, fucking variant. Man, check this out, bro. Uh, let me just tell you this quick thing. So, we went to church on Sunday. Second Baptist, if you go into the, the main part where it's English, you don't really see too many masks. There's not a lot of masking going on at good old Second Baptist. How did I know that's where you were going with this? But now you have the, the Spanish language uh, portion of like it's a the whole, Telemundo portion. Yeah, it's like a whole other, what do you call that, church? It's, it's like the same church, but different building. Like an annex building? Different building, yes. Uh, but, it, but it's nice. It's, it's super nice. And um, 
a lot of masking. Mm. Which some of them folk, you know, we we probably should. Entre la raza, porque el pinche pan dulce, wey, las tortillas, wey. You know, a lot of us insulin resistant. A lot of us are pre-diabetic. So, for sure, consult with your doctor and, and, and get your health together. Vitamin D levels, all that. But, uh, so I'm not judging you for, for masking, right? But, um... But goddamn, it was, uh, <laughs> I was like, holy crap. It's like, you can almost like when you're at the grocery store and you see some people, it's like the mom is masked and the kid is masked and everybody, or you'll have like the kid masked up by themselves. Ain't nobody around. And it's like, huh, I wonder where you get your news from. Right. And then you see people without just living free. And it's like different news source, different information. I wonder if this masked person has even heard of Project Veritas or, or heard of Tim Pool or uh, Rogan? Yeah. Anything. Like Rhonda, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, Brett Weinstein. Like, do they even listen to podcasts? What new, What are your news sources? Yeah. Um, I, I told you about the Target incident a week or so ago, which was crazy enough. But to still see the amount of people that come out of like HEB, you know, with their masks on, some of them still straight up, I'm not making this up, double masked. Like, they're still double masked in the grocery store. Um, they're pumping gas. The craziest ones, dude, and I've seen these more times than I can count on both hands. Pulling out of the grocery store parking lot with a mask, maybe two masks on, and the top down in their convertible. Still with a mask. Still with a mask on. Tripping. Um, it blows my mind, man. And I almost feel bad making fun of them, but then again, I don't. So I go. To, I call it the Black H-E-B right here on McGregor, right? And the reason I call it the Black H-E-B is because it's right here in, right here in my neighborhood, and... Um, you don't have to have a survey to know, like, okay, most of the people that shop there are black. Sure. And have you ever noticed, if you ever go to a different, like, have you ever been to the Raza H-E-B on Woodridge and 45? You mean Fiesta? No. I mean, it might as well be a Fiesta. <laughs> Mi tienda? It might as well be. Um, no, it's like, you're going to see different products, right? Oh, right, right. So, the H-E-B where we go to. You'll see like, oh shit, what's that line for? It's like, oh dude, oxtails are on sale. You know what I mean? Like, oh shit, they got a special on turkey necks and ham hocks. Or, oh shit, the mustard greens are, you know what I mean? Like, obviously you still have all the same other products, but there's specific ones of that course. they make sure are there and on display. Like, the HEB I go to is where you're going to see the DJ Khaled cut out of him holding up the wine or like the, uh, the Bel Air Rosé. You'll see the Rick Ross or the Snoop Dogg wine, the 19 Crimes. Like, you'll see the actual... It's, Let's see, how much more racist can we sound right now? No, let it's me, not racist at all. Let I'm, me, I'm, not, I'm telling you right now, like, it rem, <laughs> the wine section, yeah. if you got a full body cut out of Snoop Dogg, it just gives you... Or E-40. It just gives you record store vibes. So the point I'm trying to make is... You see a lot of masking mm -hmm. at my H-E-B. And I just be wanting to tell people, like, CNN ain't it. Meanwhile, at my H-E-B, I have a Dave Portnoy cut out with his high noon vodka seltzer fucking can thing. And all the people are, most of them, not wearing masks. What? Wait, Dave Portnoy, what he got? Uh, it's called high noon. It's like a vodka seltzer mix. It's, it's called, that's a problem. It's... <laughs> Oh, it's a vodka. It's called spritz. white privilege. It's uh, pff, pff, <laughs> white privilege in the can. It's systemic privilege. It's uh, white supremacy in a can. Yeah. It's sexual harassment yeah. with bubbles. It comes with a coupon for a free pizza, too. What, what the pizza got to do with it? Pizza, he, Portnoy is a pizza guy. He's a pizza review guy. Oh, he loves okay, pizza. Okay, okay. I didn't know. I'm not an expert on him. Um, I know he's the, the uh, what president Barstool. Mm. So... Yeah, your grocery stores tell you a lot yeah. about. Check your news sources, man. <laughs> Don Don Lemon ain't it? Like, if you're watching the wrong stuff, you really thinking Jesse Smoulier got really thrown bleach on, and they really put a noose on him. He was on trial today, right, or tomorrow, or bro, or yesterday. We, uh, we're gonna have to cover this on the next episode, but yeah, this boy was saying he had relations with one of the Nigerian uh, dudes, that one of his trainers. Yes. No, he was saying that they had a thing going on, and 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 everyone's like, w "Is that your defense? What's the defense? <laughs> hold on, hold on, what's the defense? It, like, it was the BBC's fault. It's like, hold on, are you saying, <laughs> are you admitting to having your homeboys jump you? So through the back, through the rear, <laughs> through the back door, <laughs> they jumped you through the back door, sir. Is that what you're telling the court? Wait, did you help him put the noose on you? Do you like it in the cold? Wait, you you the one that bought the noose? No. 
Uh, yeah, man. So, h- how long we been going? <laughs> Why? That's a problem. <laughs> no, we're we're actually no. right we're right at our mark here. Uh, we're right at our mark. Well, you you got to use the restroom? Or no, what? no, no. I'm just, I'm just making sure. That, uh, what do you got going on, Rustin? <laughs> well, I mean, Mighty Soul is expecting me to help her fix the printer and all this other type of stuff. Well, I'm fixing that. So, what else are you doing? <laughs> Uh, I know I have jujitsu later, but honestly, man, I don't have my planner in front of me. Okay. So there's always something to do. I know. Always. There's Just like job. a lot of new merch that needs to be folded and bagged and stuff. <clears throat> All right. So uh, before we get to, before we wrap up the show, what else did we not get to? We, I uh, mean, we Kamala. have. Yeah. Her, her staff's dwindling. She has like her senior. People uh, quitting. Yeah. Her senior advisor, her senior fucking, what is it? What is it? What is it? Report comes after days. Uh, like uh, several people, her right? Her senior advisor, Simone Sanders, will be leaving her job at the end of the year and a bunch of other aides as well. So who guessed it? Nobody likes her. Not even her staff. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's stories, right? There's stories and reports of like the staff feeling like it's just not a healthy environment. Like she's mean to them. Like she'll get after them after she looks unprepared. But they're like, lady, we always give you the, the briefing and you never take time to go through all the stuff with us. And so now you're unprepared and it's your fault. Yeah, that's some of the reports and maybe we'll read them on, uh, on the Patreon episode for a friday but people are like yeah it's it's terrible she she's really arrogant she doesn't like to take our notes she she comes uh ill prepared and then doesn't want to prepare with us or whatever whatever and like, dude she's one heartbeat away this illegitimate bro she's th- that type of behavior i mean i get it man like they had stories on trump like man he had about three big macs one day you know what i mean like man you see how many filet fish you ever seen trump eat a filet fish that's a problem. It's disgusting. <laughs> like, and then he got the nerve to get a Diet Coke. It's like, those were the stories. So I get it, man. Like, I'm not going to judge Kamala on some hearsay. Like, I don't know if there were um, actual source, like actual, what you call that, man? Uh, witnesses, right? Yeah. You don't want to have no anonymous source. You want to have a legit source. But there have been a lot of talks of that shade war. Between right. Team Biden, Team Kamala. Um, overall, man, elections have consequences and they seem very unpopular, very ineffective, very illegitimate. But as we are seeing, this uh, this red tsunami, as you've coined it, is definitely coming. You know, we just had the uh, what was the last race that we were keeping tabs on? Uh, Virginia. Uh, obviously, we've got Texas coming. A bunch of stuff coming up in 2022, but there's no way that it doesn't go like very, very s- close to solid red next time. And we got to make sure that counts. Like, if we're going to be talking about it, I follow this shit like sports. I've said this before, and if, if it's boring to you and you think it's like, why, you know, you don't want to get obsessed with it, but you want to pay attention to it, think about it as sports. If you can follow the Astros for 100 and whatever games <laughs> and then get heartbroken when they lose for the third time out of four years in the World Series, at I, least. I'll follow towards the end. I can follow, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, Brief me. Yeah. Okay, so what what is this? All start. What did we just win? We division <laughs> now. Okay, do we need to go to academy yet? You're right. Exactly. At at the very least, try to keep up with some of the general elections and some of the shit that you know matters or should matter in your area. And then when the federal election comes around, yeah, you know, peep game from time to time about what's going on for the you know RNC versus DNC and blah 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 because it's legitimately like a sport. The difference is there could be dire consequences as we're finding out on some of the coasts. As New Yorkers, exactly. Yeah. I mean. If shit start looking like Australia, pe- people people are going to have to be like, okay, it's one thing to get fucked at the gas pump where you're like, okay, well, maybe it's not his fault, right? Because you don't really understand how. Trevor knows full nine minutes was about how he's, there's nothing he can do about it. Okay, exactly. Fucking so, lies. So, yeah. So, he didn't just declare war on the energy, energy industry and all that, right? But anyway, you can neglect some stuff. A little bit of inflation. Eh, you don't know what it is. You don't really understand why things are costing more. You don't understand the supply chain shortages. You may not have time to worry about critical race theory. And maybe the border hasn't, you know, it been open, hasn't been that apparent to you. Maybe a little uptick in crime. You've seen statistics, <laughs> but you haven't got robbed firsthand. <laughs> but once... They start picking people up and taking them to the camps. Or, <laughs> like, as it is, bro, they already, when this shit first popped off, they were like, some of y'all ain't going to go to work. Some of y'all can't open up. Some of y'all ain't going to make it. Some of y'all ain't essential. And people were just like, oh, 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 okay. Uh, all right. And we just some of y'all going to have to collect a check from the government, you know. Yeah. Some of y'all ain't going to be able to go to work. And, hey, that's life. 
And people were just like, well, fuck, okay, well, 14 days, all right. And yeah, pedo, two years later. And now it's like, no, wey, a huevo, a fuerzas. Yeah. Shout out to everybody that's part of the Patreon, guys. If you're not, you know, sign up. Otherwise, we'll see you on Friday. But if you're not, uh, let me just say this, too. In order to keep these charts and rankings going, it really helps if you do give us a rating or review on iTunes. It's the only platform you can really do a rating and a review. Do both, you know, preferably positive ones. And let's see if we can break into the top 100 podcast by, you know, beginning of first quarter of next year. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, hell yeah. Because if not, it's going to be me and Rob leaving reviews and shit. <laughs> just come up with fake aliases and yeah. shit. Chingo Bling 3, Chingo Bling 4, Chingo Bling Or just go Tio Juve, Mama. <laughs> Mama. Canelo. Uh, pitufo Blue. El, el Bugatti Color Pitufo. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, Cuomo got fired. So he sued CNN. Yeah, he's trying to. Uh, and well, I guess we can end on that one. He said he's suing, but uh, there is a uh, what is it called? Whatever kind of clause. It's like a, a like a moralistic clause in their contracts where if you're terminated, they don't have to pay out your contract. Oh. So I think I think it's like fifteen to twenty million that he's still owed. owed. Wow. Boy, he was gonna go buy a bunch of real estate with that. Sucks to suck. Wow. I think they were getting ahead of something. I think there was something that was about to come out or, or there's, oh, yeah. there's some. Well, that investigation, they said they hired the, they hired external lawyers or whatever. It was one day later from them, from CNN hiring this firm that they said, okay, we found a couple more things in this investigation. 24 hours later, he's fired. I'm like, all right, well, is that yeah, ever going to come out? Yeah. What's, what's coming out? Yeah. And they might be rebranding. I don't know. But uh, hey, to the full blown communist news network or what? Something. So let's let's everybody, man, let's pray for our country, pray for our freedom, you know, pray that the American dream stays alive and that we can remain some some version of, of the old normal, man. Normalish. Shit. We got to really resist, man. Like, we can't just... Your life very well depends on it. Yeah, we just can't let them transform everything. Like, I know I sound old-fashioned, but hey, some of these traditions and, and things we got to keep. You know, family's important. Don't let the state and the government bamboozle you and mm -hmm. turn your kids into Marxists and, and force you to do shit and be all goofy like Australia. So you guys, keep your head on a swivel, stay up, and please spread the word. Red Pill Tamales. Sass.